Um, and then vanity of the ego. So you can have a spiritual thought. Do you, do you believe in God? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Okay. And are you close to the church? Are you a member of a church? Uh, no, no, I don't. Really bad churches to go to. So you guys joined the Orthodox Church. <laughs> I have actually been looking. But yeah, because I mean, there is no, no one in this room, including me, is qualified to lead the direction of their own life. You're going to pick wrong after wrong after wrong. I've been to a couple of monasteries, and in the Orthodox monastery, there is a elder and the monks that are under him. The monks, outside of their daily monastic duties, need to get permission from the elder if they want to do anything else. They want to take a two-day trip to here or there. They need to ask the elder, because the elder, he has been through the spiritual path way more than anyone else. And the elder can know if this is a temptation, if this is going to feed the pride, feed the ego, and so almost everything we do that begins with I want or I desire is a temptation. Anything that is disconnected from God himself. If I did this tour and I left out the end of this speech where I talked about God and just gave you entertaining stories of I banged and beat up outrage. And if my speech was about that alone, and I decided on a 23-city tour like I'm doing now, it would be the most useless thing. It would just be for my own pride. Yeah, men are coming to me to hear me talk and hear my entertaining stories. That's a useless type of, type of thing. But if I can say how I came to God, and maybe it can inspire you, and even if only one man in this room does turn to God based on the speech I gave, then that is a worthwhile thing. That makes the entire tour worthwhile. Because if I'm not driving the school bus, then what's the point? I'm doing it for what? For, for the money, the accomplishment, to say I did it? To go travel around the United States and take pictures? So if there's some, if you're not doing it to glorify God in some way, then you're doing it to glorify yourself. Then you're glorifying, you're treating yourself as a, a, a God. So don't trust your judgment. Like now, I don't trust my judgment. Because my judgment has, I think I'm a smart guy. I hope some of you think I'm smart too. But if I could go on the wrong path for more than 15 years, waste my youth doing something, you know how much time it took me to write a bunch of band books that I no longer even sell because I'm so ashamed of it? How much hundreds of hours, not even including the experiences I had to have to gain the knowledge to write those books. How much of a fool I feel, but I'm smart. No, I'm not. So unless you have an authority that you follow, because you're not the ultimate authority. You're going to do wrong after wrong after wrong because this world is filled with evil that's tempting you. And it does, you don't have to leave this hotel room very far to be tempted. And unless you have an authority that is telling you what to do, what is right, and what is wrong, you're going to flounder for years and years. So this is the danger that you have. That, yeah, you got the truth, but what are you going to do with it? Are you going to get the material rewards? That's not going to work. So unless you have a spiritual guide in the form of a church, the chance that you're going to falter is extremely high. Thank you. In the second row, we'll come back around. Anyone here? In this, um, you know, the cultural war is in. I believe it sounds like we are sort of in the middle of this downfall of Western civilization um, due to, you know, all the things that we are up against every day. And if you look at who can project this into the future, what is it that we can do as men and, and women today, you know, the women who are here, what is it that we can do other than, you know, you know the faith aspect? Well, what actions do we need to take as a society 
as um, truly awakened men to um, help our culture move forward in a way that we can keep our civilization stable. Because right now, what is happening is we have like, Agenda 21 and Agenda, Agenda 2030, if you've heard of those. And if you, um, you know, this is illustrated in movies like They Live and Idiocracy, if you've ever seen those, and you know, the, the concept of the alien is from the, the movie They Live. Um, what can we do to counteract that in, in our society? Because a lot of people that I've talked to about this, it's just they end up being angry at me for trying to help them understand. Well, what can we do to to help our culture, our civilization, keep going instead of going downhill? You mentioned the faith. What can you do outside of that? But is, can there be any good fruit that comes from out from actions outside of that? Let me give you one example. Back at the monastery. These monks, they have goats, and from the goats, they milk them and they make soap. And I bought a couple of bars of soap, and it's the best soap I've seen since smell. They put a nice little wrapper. And a lot of wholesalers buy their soap, and their soap is sold all over the, the USA. Uh, when a monk makes things like candles and soap, they they pray continually over them. So if you have the opportunity to buy something from a monastery, then you should. Now, one story that a monk told me is that a lot of people, when they buy the soap from somewhere else, a different part of the country, they look on the wrapper and they see, oh, it's at the monastery in Wayne, West Virginia. A couple of people, they actually decided to visit the monastery because they love that soap so much that they just want to see how it's made. And what happened is that some people went to the monastery to find out about the soap and they converted to orthodoxy. So the monk smiled when he told me this. So from the fruit of their faith was making soap and that brought people closer to God. So this is why I'm a little bit hesitant to give you an action item step, a political type of step. Because really what the answer is, is for you to become as holy as you can. And from that, people will follow you, which you have to, to say. Um, you know, people, then you can start to have an impact around your friends and around your family around your community, people close to you, but it's too tempting to change the world. This is what I tried to do through my website, Return of Kings. Millions of people came there. You know, I'm sure you remember all the viral articles where the left is raging. And what did that do? It brought, like, it brought a few of you here, but it embittered and angered tens of thousands of more, if not hundreds of thousands. So for, it's just too tempting to want to change, to change the world. I find that uh, you know, outside of the faith, if you are in communion with God, he will tell you what you have to do. But me, I'm going to solve the problems of the world. I'm going to solve the evils of the world. I'm going to defeat the demons. No. So you have to become as uh, holy as you can. Once you get there, then you come to but it's a lot of guys who just want to change outside of themselves. I'm not saying this about you. Uh, people want the world to change instead of them having to change. Like a lot of guys, they're not in the faith. They want a girl who is a virgin, you know, perfect, trad. Dude, you have a ways to go. Change yourself first. You become trad first. Then guess what? Trad girls are going to want to get with you. So that's what I would say. I know that's not the answer that you want. You want, I want to solve the problems, but you can't. The problems are way beyond anything that anyone in this room can do. And, uh, you know, if I can fill the school bus with 50 or 60 men, that's way more than another viral article that red pills 100,000 people. When they read it, they'll be done with it, and then they'll go back to living the life that they want, that, that they have. Thank you. 
Well, first of all, I don't think the hottest chicks are church. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, you've had goals throughout your life, and they have been getting a job, you know, banging a bunch of women and traveling all this. What does success look like for Rouge in a quantifiable manner 10 years down the road? Where do you see yourself? What if, if in 10 years, yourself today looks at yourself 10 years and says, I made it. This is where I need to be. Based on what I have been talking about in the q and if you were to guess, what would you, what would you say it is? Well, what I, where I think I would maybe come up short is the quantifiable aspect. If you said, I preach the word, like that's not quantifiable. So if you said, I preach the word to a million people over the next 10 years. Numbers, is that, are, is numbers that, are just for the ego. The real answer is whatever God wills, whatever he wants me to do. It's not up to me. I don't have, it's not, it's, it's not up to me. And when you're living in the material world in a secular way, that's impossible to comprehend. Right? What do you mean? You need goals. Goal after goal and projects. I mean, one of the interview questions they ask you at work is like, where do you see yourself in five years? And you're asking that, I don't know. It's not, in, it's not important. When the time comes for me to take the next step, I will receive a message that puts me there. But 10 years, hey, I'll be lucky if in 10 weeks I'll know what I'm doing. I mean, outside of the tour, after it's done, the guys ask me, so what are you going to do after? I don't know. That's not the answer to that too much. <laughs> if you're president of the United States, what would you change first of all this country? The first thing I would do, I would look at the two young girls over there, I would implement a selfie tax. <laughs> Every photo you upload, $25. <laughs> And these girls are like, no, I'm not going to go for him. <laughs> for, for the men, every man here gets a state-sponsored foreign girlfriend. <laughs> In addition, you get $2,000 a month funded by the selfie tax. <laughs> And if you give me your vote, I will ban usury and stop the power of the Jews once and for all. <laughs> so it was very I think one man up front didn't like that answer. No, I'm just trying. Do I have your vote, young man? Yes. <laughs> So I have a question um, regarding sort of like prayer. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I don't know where I am as far as uh, my spirituality, but um, I've sort of uh, tried to experiment a bit. Uh, what's got me really curious is um, in this sort of new age uh, sort of spirituality, we talk about the law of attraction. And I find that very similar to prayer in some way. So, what are your thoughts on that? I avoid any new age concepts. The issue with new, new age is it boils down to a God that doesn't say no. It's the Father you've always wanted who lets you do whatever you want. So, a girl will say, you know, I'm very spiritual. I go to yoga five times each week. I am one with the universe. So, okay, great. Now, is there anything in your spirituality that you cannot do? And then there's a silence. Because, no, she can do whatever she wants. She, so she wants the benefits of the spirituality, of feeling the peacefulness, while not having to follow any of the rules. Because the rules actually are a little bit tough. So this is the problem I see with new age. 
It's just a God that wants you to do whatever you want, to live as you want. Yeah, that God is called Satan. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to have that idea. That's why all the churches are being corrupted, especially uh, a lot of churches in the United States. Um, Jesus loves you no matter what you do. Even though you went to the Gay Pride March and did drugs and got sodomized last night, uh, <laughs> Jesus loves you and come to the church. Oh, come on. So this is the, I mean, this is, if what's happened in the Soviet Union is that all the churches were shut down. You were persecuted for going to that church. But Satan came up with a better idea. Instead of shutting down the church, that doesn't kill the faith like I needed it to. Let me corrupt the church. So it won't leave the churches open, but change the message of the church so people think they're worshiping Jesus Christ, but they're actually going to worship me, Satan. So that's what you're seeing in the United States. This is the version 2.0. They did the 1.0 oh, in the Soviet Union. People still, they worshiped God, even in spite of the persecution. They actually made their faith stronger. But now you see people with a faith that's kind of weird. It's, wow, your faith matches exactly with what CNN wants you to do. You know, I didn't know that CNN and the Bible are completely compatible. And along with the corporations, wow, even all the Fortune 500 companies, they match your faith too. What are the odds that all the political and financial interests of 2019 match exactly with the word of the Bible? So this tells you how corrupted a lot of the churches are. So in terms of how to pray, I mean, you know, I don't see this, I mean, you know, I'm not familiar with the law of attraction. I haven't done that. So I can't really say it's similar or not. But uh, I don't do anything. I mean, you know, you can easily go down the occult type of path when you're asking for help, but you're not asking God. So who, if you're getting help after asking and you didn't ask God, who is helping you? So that's what I would want. Okay. And uh, do you feel like your whole like experience with, I guess, mushrooms, as you said, um, sort of lowered your inhibitions? Because uh, you. Uh, one gentleman, you had this uh, discussion about um, how you sort of, uh, like when you read the Bible, you sort of think logically about God. Do you think that kind of like, because um, you said during the experience, it um, sort of uh, inhibited like the uh, sort of limitations that your brain puts on you. So do you feel that had an influence on that? No, I didn't get any long term type of brain changes. Uh, the only thing, like I told you, it reduced the fear that I have. Uh, I, mean, I didn't really have a lot of fear. I've already been through a lot of difficult situations. But, I mean, it really started to kill the last remnants of fear. I may lose all of my books. I may lose my income. They're going to come after me. The media is going to hurt me. I'm going to be accused of this, accused of that. So it really dampened that down. You know, because now, like I was telling this man up front, like if a marriage, if you get married in the spiritual way and it goes wrong, you see it as God's plan for you. You need to go through that. That's how I see the bad things that happen to me now. Instead of the woe is me, I'm such an unlucky dude. This isn't fair. Life sucks. Instead of seeing that, I say, you know, I have to go through this. I have to overcome this. So that's what it has really helped. And I mean, I don't want to tell you, bad things happen. Bad things happen often. And if you don't have a way to deal with that, then you're just going to be frightened of the bad things. You're going to construct your life to really try to block the anxiety that comes from bad things. I guarantee it's going to happen to everyone here. There's going to be, there is something in your life coming that is bigger than you've ever faced in the past. The past. And if you don't have a way to deal with that, like I did, uh, when, when the biggest tragedy of my life happened. I didn't have a way to, to deal with it. Yeah, drink some beer, and is that going to help? No. So I was lost for a long time. And this is why I find that men who are young, between the ages of 18 to 33-ish, they don't really care about the faith that much, because they're in a stage of their lives, especially if their parents are young and are healthy too, that they don't need God. No, I'm strong. You know, I'm just beginning my life. I learned a game. I'm making some money. 
I'm good looking, I go to the gym, girls they like me, I'm doing fine, maybe not, life is not perfect completely, but I don't need God, I'm getting better and better. Every year is so far better than the year before that. When you hit the wall of that, then you're gonna need, then you're gonna need uh, help, and that's probably gonna come in your 30s. So this is why uh, not a lot of young guys who are at their peak, I don't need Roosh or his God talk. I'm gonna do it. Okay, you will until it doesn't work anymore. And then what are you going to do after that? Thank you. <laughs> no, let's come on. We don't have to be shy. Let's let's hear from from the young girl. Let's see what she has to say. I don't I don't have anything. You got it. What do you think of the speech? It was great. <laughs> And uh, is, is there any advice I gave to men about girls? Would you say that, no, that's a little bit harsh, girls aren't that bad, or do you think it's dead on? Because all um, the advice I gave is 100% correct. Um, I do, I agree with all the stuff about God and everything, and we go to church and all, all of that stuff, so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, it was it was good. <laughs> See, kind of putting me on the spot a little bit. That's no, fine. I mean, you're in a supportive crowd, even though it's 99% dudes. You know, you um, I think. I agree with you about this thing where people, they want to run away from God or whatever. It's like, oh, the churches are bad and that's too hard. Or like, I don't believe, like, you, you hear that a lot. Like, oh, like, I, you know, it's, um, I want to be pagan because that's, I, I get it. No, I, total, I totally get what you're saying, but I think you can't just, you just can't run away from it. it it'll just keep, it'll catch up with you eventually. It's, it's a harsh truth, but and people really don't want to hear it. But when I don't find that people in the West they run away. They don't go the pagan route, but they go to the Indian Hinduism, the mysticism route. It's so cool to go to India and meditate with the guru and take the pictures, and she comes back with the robes or whatever it is. So at times when you don't want to accept the reality. You go far away. So you have Christianity right here. So what do you do? You go to India. You know, you go to the opposite. Even me, I kind of did that. Where I was in the United States, I didn't want to accept it. I didn't want to accept that. This is where my home is going to be. My mom and dad are here. They're not going to travel with me to Poland or wherever I, I go. So I try to go far away because I'm going to be happier th there. But I learned that, no, that was just kicking the can down the road and I have to now start life in the United States at 40 at a disadvantage. Because if I did this when I was a younger guy, I mean, I would have a home instead of living outside of the, out the trunk of my car, like I do now. So. Actually, well, I, I do have a question. Um, so, could you talk a little bit about uh, Eastern Orthodox? Like versus um, like traditional uh, Catholicism, like we're actually we're going to be baptized traditional Catholics next week, and um, so this is the one with the Latin mass. Yep, I'll, I'll add that SSBX for the Catholic video too. And, but I, I do know you posted some videos, and uh, I, mean, I think you actually interviewed Michael Scott. You Michael Jones. You Michael Jones. I always say that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, they're like from some like you know Catholic priests. So I just like to see, like, do you know, like, what the big difference is between that, or is, is there like an intellectual, like a big intellectual tradition with these in Orthodox? Um, so I, I am actually in the Oriental Orthodox branch. This is where the Armenians, the Ethiopians, and the Egyptian Christians are. The, the Eastern Orthodox are the Russians, the Romanians, the Serbians, uh, but they're almost identical. In terms of the differences between orthodoxy and the Catholics, well, I'm not really qualified to say what the differences are. Uh, a lot, it's not that different. If you're doing the Latin mass, the traditional, I mean, I've met a lot of people who do that, and their faith and my faith is not that different. 
It's only when you get to the Protestants that now the differences start to become great. But I mean, if someone comes to me and says, I'm a Catholic, I go to the Latin Mass, I say, great, you know, if, if it serves you, if you feel like your church is resisting the secular winds, then you should stay with that. Because to leave your church is pretty a, a serious thing. It's like it's like divorcing your your wife. You need a reason to do that. It's not just oh that church, their icons are cool, or the incense in this church it smells better. You know, it has to be a solid reason that it's blocking your faith. I cannot go to this church because it doesn't practice the word of, the word of God. Um, since I don't suspect that with your church, you know, I would say to stay there. Um, you know, but uh, other than that, for, there's a lot of people who haven't really been to a church. They were raised in a completely secular type of way. Uh, so in that case, I would say, yeah, if you don't go with the traditional Catholics and the Orthodox, mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise you to go with the Episcopalians or the Methodists. I mean, yeah, go to the church with the female pastor. That's going to uh, help you. So, I mean, not to, if you are a member of those, if you're a member of the Protestant church, I'm not attacking you guys, but there is some developing problems with that, uh, that they want to go along with what the establishment wants to do. Uh, but the non-traditional Catholic church, I'm hearing after Vatican II, that there are some creeping problems getting into them. I'm not referring to the scandals uh, that were happening, but just like just the doctrine, what what the Pope is doing. So as long as the traditional Catholic Church stays that way, I think it'll be fine. I just hope it doesn't fall. That's what we hope so too. <coughs> so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk more about. Um, I want your opinion. What does your opinion say about 100 years? Uh, the agenda of these, especially now with the election coming up, of the censorship that is going on with like the YouTube. I mean, you had the experience with Amazon banning your books, with the YouTubes, the Facebooks, and everything. What do you? What is their end game? Let's say in 100 years, what do you visualize their end game is? 